Hey everyone, it's Monday the 1st of August and it's 5 to 11 in the evening. Now in this video, um, I want to talk about my health because I have good news and not so good news that I'd like to share. Um, plus I've got some random bits and bobs that I've acquired from a friend of mine and just what I've generally bought when I've been around the charity shops or some random eBay buys actually. I've got four of them here. Oh, and an update on a radio cassette player that I got about a month ago at a yard sale that I was going to film the fix on and completely forgot to do it and fixed it. Oops. Anyway, um, I'm going to start with my health and I'm going to start with the good points. I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible because <laughs> I tend to ramble, you know. I'm, I'm a bit like my mum. She, can, she does exactly the same thing when she's explaining something. It's a whole book. <laughs> right, anyway, so, I think I talked about this earlier in the year when um, I had an eye, a diabetic eye check done, the annual one, you know, that they start back up um, after the pandemic, um, and that found some bleeds on the back of my eyes and I had to go and have another proper or in-depth eye scan done. Um, now that did come back as um, confirming there was some bleeds on the backs of my eyes, but nothing had to be done right now, no action had to be taken. So I was like, that's a relief, but I'm still going to change my diet, so I did, because throughout the pandemic I was just eating cake and ice cream and biscuits and all sorts. In fact, I've got a pack of biscuits here, but I am behaving myself, look. I bought a small packet, I've only had four out of it today. During the pandemic, I could have probably polished off most of that packet in one day. When you're diabetic, that ain't good. So, when I found out about my eyes, I just thought, you know what? These are more valuable than the biscuits and the cakes and whatnot. So I thought, I've got to cut it out. So, pretty much, I just had something sweet once in a while. Usually once a week. Um... And now I find just a little nibble, like on a couple of biscuits or something here and there, like once a week, curbs that um, craving for something sweet. So sometimes I don't even have anything sweet in a week. Sometimes I go the whole week without it. I might go two weeks or two. It just depends. Anyway, so good point number one. I changed my diet and I've kept to it. Um... Then, three weeks ago now, I had to go for my annual diabetic checkup, and I missed the first one. And actually, I missed two over the pandemic period. Shouldn't have done that really, but that was my choice. I just didn't want to feel like a bother with everything that was going on at the time. Um, I know I'm silly, I probably shouldn't have felt like I was being a bother, you know, it's what the nurses and whatnot are there for, but. I still felt like it and I just chose to skip them, you know, with the promise that I would go to the first one after the pandemic, which I did, although I did miss the first one because I forgot the appointment and <laughs> had to rebook it, but never mind. Um, I got there, you know, and when you go with these annual checkups, they take bloods to send off um, to check things like your kidney, your liver, your Glucose, which I think is called the HB1AC, I think is what they call it. I'm pretty certain that's what they call it. Um, which is basically your glucose level in the blood. Um, did I say cholesterol? I can't remember, but they check that as well. And everything like that, all the important stuff. Um, and they check the bottoms of your feet just to make sure you still got feeling. They have like a little brush thing that they just gently run up and down your feet and all over because um, if you lose feeling that's not a good thing um, and they also check for a pulse just to make sure you've got a good strong pulse in your foot as well because diabetes can affect the limbs down there for some reason I don't know what the reason is for it um, but yeah mine are still good which is good I like my feet um, but I guess if one had to come off one day, I wouldn't have a lot of choice in that, would I? 
Anyway. Um, so, the next appointment, which would be the following week, which is like the follow-up, just to discuss results and things, that was done over the phone, which is what they do now. They've been doing that sort of thing since the pandemic started. So, uh, we were talking on the phone, and she said, you know, bloods came back fine, cholesterol a little bit high, but nothing to worry about. Um, cholesterol should be around 3 minus 4.7. So, as you know, it's, a, it's up there, but apparently they ordinarily wouldn't worry about it. I'll come back to the cholesterol. Because <laughs> I'm actually now on meds for it because of something completely unrelated. But I'll get there in a moment. Right? Um, kidneys, liver, that's all functioning fine. My HB1AC, apparently on my last checkup a couple of years ago it was sort of around 88, 98. Um, it's now dropped, I believe she said dropped to 64. That's quite a considerable considerable drop in my book. Um, and I'm actually very close now to the 50, which is where they want you to be. Um, so I'm pretty proud of that. I did not expect that. I don't know if that's just it wouldn't have dropped like that over that two year period just because of the crap I was eating. So I've, I'm pretty certain it dropped when I cut out the crap, sort of February time. Um, oh, I forgot, they also take your weight. And I've lost weight since I was weighed two years ago. I've actually lost about 10 kilos. And I wouldn't mind betting that was over the last five months as well that I've actually lost that weight. And I didn't notice it at first, but I was looking down like that this morning, and I was sort of looking up at the tummy, and I thought, you know what, I can actually see it now. Because friends and family, um, they've, they said quite often, don't you look like you're losing weight, you've lost weight. And of course, when you look down like that, you don't really see it at this angle, so I was like, oh, really? I don't see no difference, I still feel the same. But, nope, confirmed. I've lost about 10 kilos. I'm 88 kilos now. Um, so that is good. So yeah, I got off the phone. That Oh, that's the other thing she's put me on before I get to that. <laughs> um, some new diabetic medicine. Um, it's called Jardians. And what it does, it's meant to take the excess glucose in your blood and take it down to your bladder so you go pee it out, which does mean frequent trips to the toilet. Not as frequent as I was expecting, to be honest. Um, but still, I am going a bit more frequently than before I was taking these. But in my mind, I'm just thinking it's a small price to pay to keep my sugars down. You know, if it helps keep the sugars down and it does work, then I'm quite happy to take a few more extra trips a day to the toilet. Um, yeah, apparently it's quite a new medicine. When I went to pick it up at the pharmacy, they actually had a form for me to sign, basically saying whether if I wanted the pharmacist to contact me in a month's time to basically, um, you know, I suppose interview me just to see how I'm getting on with the new medicine and whatnot. Info, I suppose, data for them to send back to the medicine company and whatnot. Um, I don't know if it's working, but I do know I'm going to the toilet more frequently, so it must be doing something. <laughs> but like I said, I'm willing to make that sacrifice if it's going to keep my glucose down. Yeah, so I got off the phone that day pretty pleased you know I thought well my health is actually going in the right direction for a change you know I've got lots of improvements I actually felt really motivated to keep going I thought great fast forward to Friday that week right I want to go to the car boot on Saturday morning mum didn't she wanted to take a rain check as she calls it um, and I went to bed that night intending to get up in the morning get some breakfast, hop on the moped, ride over to Alsham, have a wander around the car boot and then ride from Alsham to Mum's and spend the rest of the day there. I didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> I 
I woke up Saturday morning, I'd say around about 8 o'clock in the morning, not being able to see out of my right eye. Well, I could, but it's very limited peripheral vision. There's a big spot, for want of a better description, right in the middle of my vision, right in the centre of vision. And I couldn't see fudge all out of it. Nothing. It was just completely blocked. So I literally just had peripheral vision. Um, if I looked at someone right in front of me, I don't know, walking like 20, 30 feet away from me, I would just see their legs walking. I wouldn't see a torso or anything. Completely blocked. It was like trying to look through, I don't know, a complete solid object like a tree. It just didn't work. So I got a bit panicky, naturally, because, you know, you're just thinking, what the heck is going on? Is this something related to my diabetes? Has something else happened? So I contacted mum. Somehow I managed to find her number on my phone because those that may not know, I have what they call an astigmatism. Um, the lenses in both my eyes are misshapen so they don't focus the light. The light doesn't enter them properly. So I, this is actually the worst one. This one, ordinarily, before what happened happened, um, is my good eye. The left one is the bad eye. Always has been, has been like it since birth. I don't, I have no idea what 2020 vision is like. I have no idea what it's like to see equally out of both eyes. Never had it. <laughs> you know, when I was young, they tried all sorts. They tried um, getting me to wear a patch over this eye, so it forced this eye to work, didn't do anything. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't read anything, that's just black lines, the writing on the monitor, that's all that is. I can't even see what the picture is in my poster. I open this distance, I can with this one. Now this one's getting better, it's not there yet, but it is getting better, thankfully. Um, but yeah, anyway, mum contacts 111, they contact me and basically say, Get yourself to A&E, you need to be checked. Um, so I did, and we weren't actually in the A&E department long. Pfft, half an hour, maybe? Because um, Mum said it's actually a new system. It wasn't there the last time she was up there. Um, what I've got now, when you go into the Norfolk and Arch Hospital, I don't know if any other hospitals have this, but at least at the Norfolk and Arch, in the main lobby area, I've got like, I'd call it a poor cabin really, it's a temporary cabin of some description. And in there they've got GPs, although there's only one on on Saturday morning. And there's waiting seats right outside it. So when you go in, you get checked by two nurses on the on a little desk, desk, and you say disc. <laughs> you know, and you give them the information, what's wrong, blah -de blah blah and they give it to the GP and I suppose, well I suppose the GP just calls you in in turn as you arrived but we were only waiting 10 minutes before he called us in got me to look up at an eye chart you know, can I read or what's the smallest row of letters you can read none at all, can't see it, it's all completely blocked <laughs> you know, can't see it with the right, um, left eye either um, and he went, how many fingers am I holding up? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> if I can't see the chart, I'm not going to see your fingers. <laughs> so, um, he then referred us over to the eye clinic, which wasn't actually far, actually it was the other side of the building from where A&E was, um, for a 1.30 emergency appointment. We get seen there, I had to have another eye scan done. I expected that because I'm going to want to um, you know, examine the eye, see what's gone wrong. And um, the doctor was quite thorough, which I like. Um, now I've heard people complain about foreign doctors and they don't like foreign doctors, you know, we should never bring them in. Piss off. If they're a doctor and they're qualified and they're good, I don't care where they come from as long as they can treat me. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this doctor was um, from India. Quite a heavy accent, actually. Um, but he was thorough in his examination. You know, he had one of them 
like a gadget uh, where you put your chin on a little rest and you put your forehead up against another support and then it, that allows him to use the rest of the device to look into your eye. There's like just various lenses he can pick from to have a look. Um, yeah, and he went between both quite a number of times actually, so he's quite thorough. Um, but he made it sound like I had an arterial bleed on the back of the eye. That's not the case. <laughs> um, he referred me that day to um, the TIA clinic, which is sort of a stroke clinic. Pardon me. Um, and they actually phoned me the following Tuesday, so Tuesday last week, um, with an appointment Wednesday, the very next day, and I was like, well, I'm not really going to refuse that appointment, am I? I need to be seen, so off we went. So Wednesday we were back at the hospital. They um, see, I'm still thinking it's not, you know, an artillery bleed on the eye. So I'm just wondering what the heck all this is for at this time. You know, they want to scan both the artery and vein in the neck, the carotid and jugular. Yeah, carotid and jugular, which I think is that way round, isn't it? Carotid jugular. Um, first, so I had to go and have that done. They came up clear. I thought I could have told you that. <laughs> Never mind. Better to check it with the machines and make sure than just guess. Um, then we went all the way over to the TIA clinic. <clears throat> we got seen there. The nurse did a heart readout, five second heart readout. Um, so I was wired up to that. It took longer to wire me up to the machine than it did for the machine to give the readout. <laughs> um, there's one on each leg, one. I can't remember, one either side of my chest and a few down this side as well. <clears throat> um, and blood pressure and whatnot. They even did a blood pressure reading after I'd stood up, so straight away when I stood up. Because what I don't want is for your blood pressure to drop when you stand up, because that's not good. But mine is actually okay in that respect. Blood pressure, I actually forgot to mention this earlier, blood pressure is a little bit high. Um, but we're sort of monitoring that at the moment. I've got a BP monitor here, which I've got to do shortly. I'll do that after this video. <clears throat> um, yeah, so... You know, after all that, I had to wait and then see the doctor. He called me in and basically said I'd had what they call a TIA. And I cannot remember for the life of me what that stands for. But in layman's terms, it's what they call a mini-stroke. Which I always thought was a bleed, but it doesn't have to be a bleed. It can be a clot, a blood clot. And what happened with me is, a blood clot has come from somewhere in my body, I have no idea where. They're not even sure where it came from, they can't find a source for it. And it got wedged in an artery in the back of this eye, and that's what caused the sight problem, or the sight loss. Um, so, I'm now on blood thinners. I've been given aspirin. I've got to go and pick four more up tomorrow because I needed two weeks worth and they didn't quite give me enough for two weeks. Um, and then I've got to go on to what the nurse called cloppy dog roll, which is clopidogrel. I can't even say it properly. But she said that's why they call it cloppy dog roll because it's a lot easier to say and it rolls off the tongue better. Um, and I'm going to be on those for life as long as I don't get jaundice. Um, that's the one symptom I, um, the doctor said, if I get jaundice, stop them. And it'll have to be changed for something else. Um, but apparently this cloppy dog roll stuff is quite a common one for blood thinners and stroke victims. Um, uh, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, and statins for the cholesterol. So. When I said early, you know, ordinarily they wouldn't worry about the cholesterol just being a little bit high like mine is, but given my circumstances, they want to bring it down, so I'm on statins for that. Plus, I've cut out a lot of high-fat foods, because I, I used to love all my pastry-type foods, you know, pies and um, also greasy foods. I loved my fish and chips from my local chip shop. I can't, I can't risk it now. I haven't had any takeaway in over a week. That's unheard of for me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> although I've noticed I'm saving money. 
and I'm eating better meals, I'm actually cooking meals, I'm actually cooking meals. See, so some good is coming from this. Um, yeah, so cholesterol's got to come down. I love sausage rolls as well, and I, I suppose in theory I could eat them. I've just got to eat them on a not so regular basis. <laughs> you know, just cut it out, sort of thing. Um, so yeah, essentially at 38 years old, I had a mini stroke. No, it's now, um, it's been nine days. I just had to work it out quickly since it happened and I have regained the majority of my sight in that eye. Um, still a bit hazy in places um, and there's still a few blocked patches but almost every day I do notice a difference, um, an improvement. Not every day, there's been a couple of days where it's been sort of static and it hasn't changed but most days I have um, noticed an improvement, so fingers crossed because I am missing riding on the moped. I didn't think I would miss it as, um, this much, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I am missing it. Um, but yeah, I know my eyesight is getting better because I did manage to build this little Lego desk tidy the other day, a few days ago actually. So a wee bit of a struggle, but I got there. It wasn't too bad. Um, I didn't even intend to go out and buy this. I was just looking on the clearance shelf in Sainsbury's and they had some of these sets on there. Um, it's what they call the Lego Dots. Lego Dots theme. Hang on a minute. I've got the bo another boxed one over here. So I picked two of them up. I don't know if anybody has seen these before. Um, so you just basically make the main desk tidy up and then you can put like your own design all over it which is pretty much what I did well I put the face on because I actually quite liked that and then I just did my own thing with it um, and now I have a pen holder on my desk again because I haven't had one since um, the filming for Filthy House SOS they threw mine in the bin with all the contents which I didn't know until um after the fact. I wish they hadn't. Um, well actually I wouldn't mind most of it. They could have just thrown it out. It's only a pen. I can go out and get another one. There's just a couple of paint pens I had in there that I used. Um, a gold one and a silver one. And I like to use those to detail in the um, die cast cars. Matchbox cars when I restored them. Um, I've got two more but they've got quite a fat tip. I need to buy a couple more. Um, the really fine tipped ones. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so I've actually built a few things. I actually built uh, that this evening. And I only dropped one piece on the floor, and that was only because I was confusing myself with it, not because I couldn't see it. <laughs> but that is one of them two-in-one sets. So when I was in Lidl's, which is where I got that from, I've got the other one. I've got two. So I can now go online and get the instructions to build that one. I like to do that with these two in one set so I can build both. If I like the second build, there's a few I've not bothered because I've not liked the second build. So, well, that looks like a little tow truck. So, yeah, I'll give that a build. Probably not tonight because it's getting late now. I've got a couple of um, poly bag kits as well. I've only found one. I bought two, but I don't know where the other one is at the minute. Might still be in Mum's car shouldn't be, it should be in um, one of the grocery bags that I bought up, but uh, um, I can't even remember what the other one is. This one, oh, I think it's a Lego City one. So, I'll find those, and I'll, that's a good shot as well. <laughs> I can get those built up. Um, on the subject of Lidl's, for anyone that might need these, at least my local one had these in there. I like to stock up on these CR2032s when Lidl's have got them in. Because um, I actually find a lot of LED bike lights. So I've got a lot that actually use these now. So, yeah, I do like to have a bit of a stockpile on. <clears throat> $1.99 for six. Not bad. 
around the 2032s. But I do like the Tronic brand of batteries as well. I've got loads of rechargeable Tronic batteries. They work fine. They last fine. I can't complain. Um, yeah, we've sort of smoothly gone from health onto showing you the stuff I've been buying. <laughs> That was a, actually a good transition, wasn't it? It was just nice and smooth. It just sort of rolled on to the next. Never mind. <clears throat> um, that's not exactly what I wanted to do, but we'll roll with it. Um, yeah, me and Mum went around the charity shops today. Not all of them, because by the time Mum got to town, some of them had closed, because they closed early. But I actually found a standalone PIR sensor. I've been wanting one of these for ages, but you know what? I can't remember what for. But I bought it anyway. In the vain hope that I'll probably remember what I wanted one for. <laughs> but it's been so long I can't remember what I wanted it for. Probably don't even need it now, but either way, I'm sure I can play around with it one way or another. Um, from the same charity shop, I found this as well. It's not exactly what I thought it was. The box just called it magnetic spotlight. That's all it's got on the box, which is here. Betterware magnetic spotlight. I don't even know Betterware did anything like this. I don't even know Betterware still existed. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't open the box in the charity shop because I thought, you know, my hands are full. I'll just gamble and just look at it when I get at home. But it's one of those car ones, you see. You plug it in your cigarette light, then you can stick this under your bonnet and you've got a light to work by. I don't know how bright it is. I've not connected it up to power or anything. But you actually turn the lens bit here and that winds your um, cable in. I think that's just a bit of a pig to get this cigarette plug off. It's a bit tight. Yeah, you can... Well, I thought you'd have been able to pull it like that, but apparently not. There we go. I think this has been played with, and I think the cable might have gotten a bit knotted, so... Yeah. I might end up... Probably taking that screw out of there and just disassembling it and hopefully... <laughs> being able to sort this cable out. It's not, it's not budging. That's tight. I think it's literally got knotted somehow. I did just get it to release a bit more anyway. I'll play with that tomorrow or something. Um. Oh, I just got some now, that's what I call music CDs from one of the charity shops as well. I've got a feeling I may have these. But I can never remember what I've got over there and what I haven't. I'm trying to make a complete collection. At least of some of the older CDs anyway. I mean, they still make CDs and compilations so... I don't know if I'll ever actually complete the collection. It's now, that's what I call music, a hundred and something now. Um, oh yeah, I did buy some bike lights on Marketplace and I had them posted because they were a bit too far away for me to go and get. And I actually thought I was just buying one set. No, it was actually two sets. <laughs> Didn't realise that till I arrived. It's just a set of dynamo lights like this. And like I said, I thought I was just buying one set. Oh, two sets. Not that that's a problem. I mean, I could always put one set together and eBay it for a few quid and get a few quid back. I didn't spend a lot on it in the first place, so... Yeah. I've got extra bike loads now. I only really want them for these, because I've got a couple which have uh, rusted. I know this is not a genuine Union brand of lamp, but it's a good replica, I suppose. 
But having said that, I'll probably stick this outside in the rain once and it'll go rusty as hell. <laughs> Back one won't because the body is plastic, so it grounds out through the uh, little screw there on the metal bracket. But I also bought them because I actually liked these dinky little lights. I don't know why I just like the dinky little light. <clears throat> I like lights <coughs> of all shapes and sizes. Even the lady in the charity shop, I'm always in there and I'm always buying bulbs and torches and things. And she actually said today, you like buying lights and things, don't you? I said, yeah. She said, you got like a collection or something, girl? I was like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, oh, that's pretty cool. <coughs> I didn't think it was cool to collect lights, but... Quite illuminating, I will say that. <laughs> Speaking of, I've got three more on the floor to show you, but I'm going to show you this one next. Uh, this was actually a random eBay buy. I didn't even set out to look for this spe um, specifically. This is was advertised, and I saw f um, a few more on eBay advertised exactly the same as a um, World War II life jacket light. Um, so I'm assuming you'd clip this end on your life jacket and in there, I will open it up to show you because this is quite easy to unscrew, it's got quite a lot of thread, it just takes an ordinary D-cell, probably wasn't even called a D-cell in World War II because I know a C-cell was, wasn't always called a C-cell. Right, that's it. And all you do is, you just plug this wire in the top. And you have a nice little red glowing light. So I'm assuming it would be used for if you had to abandon ship at night. This would be for the um, would-be rescuers to be able to see you at night. I'm assuming that's what this is for. Because I know you can get modern versions of things like this, you know, like little strobes that you can clip on yourself so you can be found and whatnot. So yeah, I'm just, I th I'm pretty certain this has been rewired because that wire, not only is it really stiff, it just looks far too new. So I am pretty certain someone's actually rewired this at some point, which I'd expect. Um... I wouldn't have expected the wires to have lasted all these years. Um, in fact, yeah, I know they have because that is actually PVC. They wouldn't have had that back then. But yeah, I, I expect that anyway. I'd only paid 15 quid for it, so. No, I didn't. I tell a lie. I had an offer sent through from the um, seller. You know, they sometimes put, knock the price down on their items. Um, yeah, and I snapped it up because I thought, you know, I'd be a dipstick not to. And it, I think it's quite an interesting light, you know, it's got a bit of history to it. And to be honest, for one battery, one cell, it's, uh, it's not actually that dim, you know. <laughs> Obviously, it's not going to be the brightest thing on the planet, but. It's not dim, it's not useless dim, if that makes sense. Where can I put this? I'll just put it back on here. Uh, should we just keep to the light theme? We're talking about it now. Um, I bought these ones about a month ago. So most of this stuff I actually got before the stroke happened in the eye. There's a couple of um, Zen and Strobe beacons. They were bought for a pound each. Um, from a fellow um, barricade light collector, actually. Um, he couldn't get them to work, but all I did was have a play around with the wires and sort of tidied those up, and they just started working for some reason. I have no idea why. I must have magic hands or something. <laughs> but I actually quite like these. I must sound really weird, you know, saying that I like certain lights and whatnot. 
but I do like the style of them. And the fact that they're not rotary, be rotary? rotary beacons, which I've got quite a few of, because I've actually found quite a few at the car boots this year. So I've got a few Britax beacons and all sorts now. Um, I like as well, because it's, it's different. And I've got a couple of LEDs. There's an LED one I actually got at the car boot earlier this year. <laughs> it's one of them, what they call a DIN pole mount. There should have been a base on the bottom here that just mounts onto what they call a DIN pole. I took all that off because I was going to mount this differently. In fact, I've actually drilled out the mounting holes that this seems to have. And I'm guessing there is an option for this exact light to come um, with said mounting holes. So I just thought, you know, it's aluminium, soft metal. I'll just drill them out myself. So that's exactly what I did. And this is actually quite bright as well, to be honest. I was actually... Um, Pleasantly impressed with this. You know, it looks like this lens threads on, but apparently it doesn't. No, it doesn't. There's a screw in there. Will that screw come out? I don't know, because I've never tried it. There's a steel screw and an aluminium body, so... Yeah, maybe not. <clears throat> Oh, I've just found that other poly bag set. It's actually down here on the floor. <clears throat> right, next light. Actually, before I get to those lights, because they're quite big, I'm going to clear the desk, because um, it'll be easy. So, um, traded a few things with a friend of mine again. In fact, my old i7 board, which he won't have a go at getting to work. I still owed him for the Oculus Quest anyway, so I did keep the RAM, <clears throat> but he also gave me this motherboard, and that is my RAM from it, <laughs> from the old motherboard, and he couldn't get it to work, he said he tried everything as well, including the old oven reflow trick where you put it in the oven, you know, you heat an oven up, I think, to however many degrees, I can't remember now, and leave it in there for a quarter of an hour and no, he still couldn't get it to work. Um, he did say with this one though, that he couldn't get these USB ports to work. So, you know, he said he wasn't sure if he needed some special drivers for those or not. I have no idea. I'd have to look at the Gigabyte website for that. But yeah. Quite a nice uh, mobo there. I'm not going to put that. Mm, I need space. <laughs> Don't really want to lay it on the floor. He also um, bought this to me today a light up keyboard. Which is actually good because my keyboard, all the, um, the letters on the keys have all worn off, of most of them. And I haven't even used that keyboard for a year. Not even close yet. So I was quite disappointed in that. I know it was just a cheap 30 quid um, gaming starter set. So I probably shouldn't have expected much more really, should I? But you know, I've actually seen cheaper keyboards. Just standard keyboards. And the keys last a darn sight longer than that. So it's still bad either way. I've got keyboards... Um, up in the cupboard, you know, that decades old, that's still got all their keys perfectly clear. Laptops with their keys perfectly clear, so that, that is just bad. <coughs> oh yeah, I've got this as well. Another Apple. So I've got two MacBooks now. This one's a bit older though. Um, but it does work. I think it's got charge in the battery. There we go, you've probably seen my face light up. <laughs> there we go. There will be a folder pop up in a moment with a little question mark on it. He had his um, Windows hard drive running on it. But his desktop was pissing him off so he put the hard drive in this. He had um, 
Well, that's it. It was thermal throttling. Yeah, there we go. See, I don't want to put windows on this, though. I want to put it back as an Apple machine, you know? Oh. Um, yeah, he had... Um, I was using an AMD motherboard. And it's got quite a big processor chip on it. You know, he said that's what was cooling it. Someone before him had put this cooler on it. Um, so I gave him a bigger one. And he said it's still running a little hot, but it's a lot better and a lot more stable. Um, he probably wants something more like either liquid cooled that I've got. Oh, no. oh. I'm not sure what that was. Something just went ping from something. If that actually looks like a piece of my radio. I think I just pinged a bit off. Anyway, or a heat sink that sort of size, but this is an Intel. Now, I've actually got a motherboard that that can go on. That's the one that I just put under the table. <laughs> I didn't think I could because I didn't think he included the bottom plate, but I've just now I look at it, he has. I need to find a fan to put on it though. Um, he said it hasn't got the fan because he stole it for his PC. <laughs> that doesn't matter, I've got fans kicking around. I'm sure I could rig something up on there somehow. So, yeah, but yeah he probably could do with a heat sink that size, but for an AMD. Um, oh yeah, game of these as well, but he said they light up, but I've not tried them yet. Hang on. Just some um, funky little speakers. Do it look quite funky. You've got an inline volume control on them. Oh, hang on. USB. So, if I do this, oh yeah, <laughs> they'd be quite nice to use with a laptop, wouldn't they? Yeah. Actually, to be honest, the speakers themselves, the cones and whatnot, actually look um, quite nice. I wonder what they sound like. Now plug them into something and see what they sound like. But not right this moment. Right. Now that I've got some space on the table, I will first I can't even see where a bit of plastic might chip off this. This is the radio that I bought for 50p. I also ordered a bunch of belts for from China. And they um, took two weeks to get here, so they came on the slow boat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I um, got a bit excited when the belts arrived and fitted them and started working on this before I even thought to put the camera on, so my apologies. but. It does work, although I was using it the other day and one of the speakers kept cutting out and I kept wiggling this the volume knob and it kept coming back in, so dirty control knob there, I'll have to clean that pot up. But that's ridiculously easy to get into this, just undo the screws and then with the front. And the pots are just up here, I can get to them easily. It's just a matter of um, when I'm able to, to uh, Undo all the screws and get that sorted. <clears throat> but yeah, sorry, I'd already. Uh, <laughs> I was just so excited to get the belts in it. Um, I can't remember what I did with the pot, but I bought two lots. Two lots of belts. So I've got plenty of belts now. Anyway, going back to lighting now. I've had a bit of a fascination with um, emergency lighting. Um, I've actually got a few in the cupboard that I've rescued from demolitions and whatnot. I'll put this on the desk. Let me just uh, pan the camera around. 
So here's one of two that I bought. Um, and I'm going to blame one of my viewers for this. Because uh, before I bought these, um, he brought up the subject of... A, was it him? It might have been me, actually. But either way, the subject of emergency lighting came up on uh, my Discord server. And for some reason, I just went on eBay, just randomly looking at emergency lighting. And saw this for about seven quid. And I won it. <laughs> um, this one was pictured with two lead acid batteries, but they didn't include those. I'm not fussed with that because there are probably knackered batteries anyway and I just don't see the point in shipping knackered batteries unlike the seller with the other lamp did <clears throat> but yeah I bought these because I've only ever seen these used in like commercial settings you know like um, big open rooms like halls, community centres um, village halls that sort of thing you know where a big area needs to be lit. Um, what I didn't actually know at the time is that these are halogens. And they take two 12 volt lead acid batteries. I think they're 12. I'm pretty certain they are 12. It says it on the details. So I would have to get two new batteries for them. Um, <clears throat> it shouldn't be a problem because I know lead acid batteries are still made for things like this. Um, I, mean, I don't need very, very big ones, do I? I'm not going to get big ones in there anyway. So, yeah. I don't know if I will get batteries for them because I haven't got anywhere to actually put these. Unfortunately, I haven't actually got a wall to put it up on. Um, I can't even put it above a door because there's not enough space, I don't think. I think the lights would actually bang on the ceiling. Uh, yeah, actually, I've got... I've got two um, emergency fire exit signs as well I'm waiting for. I don't think they've been marked as shipped yet, but that doesn't mean anything. I've known sellers to not mark the item as shipped and still ship the item out, so... I'll show you those when they arrive. Here's the second one, which is just by a different brand. Now, I believe... Um, I was asked on my Discord server what... The um, maker is of this one what the brand is um, I forgot to answer <laughs> but uh, I don't actually know I've not seen anything on the details on here I can actually read the sticker at the time <laughs> but I've got a friend to read the um, label here out to me and there's just nothing on it there's no brand name or anything and I have no idea what that is rattling around in there It's even got like a carry, I don't know why, it's got like a carry handle on it. <clears throat> so yeah, I picked those two up, less than £10 each. Well, I suppose by the time you count shipping it would be about £10. And I also found this, which I quite liked. Yeah, it's just an ordinary... Um, 8 watt T5 fluorescent tube in there. New old stock. You know, none of the knockouts or anything have been used. It's even still got a little Ziploc bag in there with the little um, sealing washers in there for mounting this to a wall. Um, the um, battery pack in there wasn't connected, but when I connected it, it did light up. And if I actually had a screwdriver at hand, I would have shown you that, but uh, I haven't. I can show you that in the next video. Um, it didn't light up for long, it only lit up for about a minute before the battery went, nope. <laughs> but yeah, it's still got a charge, so I actually reckon if I actually put this up on a wall and connected it to power, and let that battery charge, that this would actually be a fully functioning um, emergency light. <clears throat> Emergy light, this one is called. Cool, I can read all that darn sight clear. It's still not perfect in that eye, and I'm still a way off from riding the moped, unfortunately. I'm actually hoping by this time next week it would be clear enough for me to um, hop on the bike. I can ride a push bike. But uh, I'm not risking it on a 
moped, you know. Five mile an hour on a push bike is a bit different to um, 30 mile an hour on a motorised vehicle. So, yeah, I'll wait. I'm daft, not stupid. Right. Um, oh. Um, we have um, the same friend that bought me the computer bits over and that we traded a couple of bits with. We also traded PC cases, so I've got another one over there. But I thought I'd show you this one first. Because uh, I think I said in a previous video yeah, a month or so ago that uh, I bought a computer case for £2 at a yard sale. Well, here it is, finally. It's quite a small one. But I liked it for £2 and I thought, you know, if I don't actually use it myself, I could potentially put a build into it and flip it for a few quid, basically, which is what my youngest brother used to do. You know, he used to love... He hasn't done it for a while now, mainly because he's moved and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, he used to just buy motherboard bundles and whatnot and find cheap cases like this and put them together and then flip them for a bit of profit. Just because you like to build the home computers, I think, more than anything. Well, the part we doesn't want to because I really like this case. The more I look at it, the more I like it. That's not a good thing. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to, or I'm planning to, recase a computer for a friend of mine. I built it for him as a Christmas present. Um, and it was the only case I had, which is working great. But I've always had this worry about the cooling and the airflow in it. It's not the best for that sort of computer. Not the worst, but not the best. And I've now got spare my old white case. So I was going to give that to him because that's got way better cooling. I'd rather go overkill on the cooling and make the computer last than have inadequate cooling. So when I get the case back from mum's to here, and uh, when I've got a bit more eyesight back. Well, if I can build Lego, I should be able to build a bloody computer, but um, yeah, I haven't got the case here anyway. So once that case is back here, hopefully the eye will be a lot better. And I'll, um, I could actually take it over to his and uh, we can, I can recase it over there. Might do that actually, it might be a nice change to go over to his. He usually comes here. <clears throat> so, yeah, and the other case I've got is this big one. That's a Cooler Master case. Sorry, the bloody trying to do the handle up and knocking you uh, up and down at the same time. There we go. That's a Cooler Master case. Now, I didn't know this until he bought it to me. I'm going to boot the PIR sensor out of the way. Under this door, hang on, I can't see what I'm doing, there we go, I can't see what I'm doing at the minute anyway, <laughs> but under there, there is a hot swap SAT connector for a hard drive, so I can just put a hard drive straight on the top here, and apparently that's got a connector that connects straight to a motherboard, so what I was thinking of doing with this is to literally put a PC build in it, and use it as a bit of a test rig to test um, SATA hard drives and things, maybe to format them and whatnot and prepare them for whatever I want them to do. So I think that would be perfect for that. So I haven't got to piss ass around with, um, you know, taking side panels off and having cables hanging out the side. You know, I can just pull this dust cover off and just slide the drive straight down. And I'll do laptop drives, it'll do two and a half as well as three and a half. And I've actually seen there's a fan at the top there, I can see the sticker. So he's actually left that fan on for me. Yeah, I actually quite like that. I might build, I might put that gigabyte motherboard he um, 
gave me into that one. I was going to put it in the other one I just showed you, but I think that's too big. Um, I think I'll need a Micro ATX to put in that one. Um, which I have got in the kitchen. It's an older Gigabyte board, but it should fit that case. And for some reason, I'm not sure why any motherboard manufacturer would do this, but I know there are others that have done this sort of thing. It's actually got um, four DIN, um, DIM slots, two for DDR2 RAM and two for DDR3 RAM. Obviously you can't use them all together, you can only use one or the other. But I just don't understand why you would have one, you know, a set of each. Surely it would make sense to just have one or the other. I don't know. There must be a reason there somewhere because I can't imagine a motherboard uh, manufacturer would just do it randomly. <clears throat> you know, there must be some specific market it was aimed for because it's still got a floppy disk drive connector on it as well. You know, a DDR3 motherboard or DDR3 capable motherboard with a floppy disk um, connector and controller on it. Yeah, I'm not sure what that would be used for. It's still a nice board. I do like the colour of Gigabyte boards, if I'm honest. <clears throat> I'm just looking around just to make sure I've not forgot anything. <laughs> um, got a few die-cast cars here that I picked up today as well. In a local charity shop for 50p a piece. I still haven't figured out if that's Hot Wheels or Matchbox yet. I think Hot Wheels. Let's see if I can get the uh, price sticker off and have a look. Yep, Hot Wheels, I can see the logo. The Beetle, that's Matchbox. I don't think I've got one of these, but knowing me, I probably have already got one of these police beetles. Wee woo. It's a wee woo car. And I've got a Citroen 2CV. Um, I bought this one just because I don't know the brand. Uh, it was up here. Where is it? Apparently it's not up here now. Okay. I was just looking for my magnifying glass like I said it was up here. Um, that was quite hard to see that. It's actually quite a nice one. Oh, I've just realised the front grille is missing. Never mind. I can see Citroen 2CV6, I think. That's not bad, I can I can read that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realise I was actually off camera there. That's a bit better. Yeah, I can't actually see the maker of it though. I think it just says made in China to be honest. Actually, it looks like a D. Hmm. Well, that's quite an unusual um, little model, that one. Um, I think that is it, really, guys. I can't think of anything else. You know, my eyes improving, my health is improving in general. We'll all be on some more meds for life, unfortunately. I'm already on meds for life anyway, like the diabetic meds, so I might as well add to it. <clears throat> In the mornings I'll start rattling when I walk around. Sound like one of them maracas, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh, 
of this magnifying glass. How the heck can I read two, um, two, uh, Citroen 2CV6 two on this but not see this? This needs a claim. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. It's a weird word. Geodi. The O's got like a symbol in the middle of it. I tell you what, even tonight I've noticed improvement in that eye. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Well, a load more diecast I could show you at some point. I've got a clock on the couch to uh, put up on the wall. It's one of those time zone clocks. I bought that for a pound at the yard sales as well. It's got um, London, New York. Paris and Tokyo on it. And I've got them all set and I've just been ticking away on that sofa. I want to put them up on this wall. I want to put them above the door because that's where I want to put the fire exit signs when they arrive. I might have to put new battery packs in them though. <laughs> Pardon me. I was just going to have them plug in somewhere, that's all. I mean, they'd still work as emergency lights. Mm. We've got to be careful not to unplug them. Excuse me. Right. On that note, then, I'm going to end the video. So, uh... Yeah, it's been nearly an hour, so thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Um, mine's gone blank, as always. Um, comments, that's it. Any comments, questions, etc., leave them down in the comments below. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.